Okay, this is a short video on fuel tank removal for a 97 Toyota Corolla. And I've been using this hand manual. And it's been working pretty good. Um, I just wanted to review a little bit of this with you. So, the problem was my old gas tank was leaking. Um, originally, it had started leaking at the um, this vent. This is the vent that runs back to the automatic shutoff for the uh, fuel, when you put fuel in the tank, the fuel entry point. And a um, long time ago, this had a little problem where if you filled the tank all the way up to, to, until it shut itself off, for example, um, that there'd be some weeping at this particular point. So at that point, that might have been five years ago, I used uh, some sealant and I had put this tape around it. I just patched that up and uh, at the, from that point on, I just never filled the tank all the way up until it automatically shut off. Um, this is 97, so it's well past the emission requirement and I didn't have any problem with that then. Uh, subsequently, possibly only about starting about one year ago, I had noticed because I would periodically inspect this, that when I filled the tank up to, let's say, the 10 gallon point that I had been using, that I noticed, started notice weeping or dripping even uh, around this area. So then I kind of knew that I was on limited time. So I only started filling the tank up halfway uh, for uh, until I could get this job done. Now, I did need to replace my exhaust, so I took the opportunity to replace the gas tank. Now, I did have some problems. Um, taking off the heat shield, I, I did snap one of the bolts, and I did a little video about that. And then on the next step, I was removing um, the brake cable attachment point. Now, this is one of the brake cable attachment points. I shouldn't have snapped that one because I did have access to the back side of that. I should have worked that out slowly back and forth with penetrating solvent. And I should have got that out without breaking it, but I did manage to break it now. This won't be critical because the parking brake cable turns out is very rigid type cable. It doesn't flop around or anything. And I can actually just lay it across here and put a zip tie around here and just clamp it down. And it's going to be fine. It's not, 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 not a big deal. Okay. Uh, then next thing I went was to remove the um, gas tank straps. Now these are a big deal because this holds the gas tank in. And the gas tank is quite heavy when it's filled up. And um, one of the problems in removing these bolts is um, not wanting to use heat near the gas tank. Now those bolts that were near the front I'm sorry, near the back side, to the back of the car. The attachment point there was actually quite a ways away from the tank itself. And I felt as though I would be able to heat these up with the torch without really worrying about getting the torch on the tank. That's exactly what I did. Because the reason, of course, is I couldn't get them to budge with, um, without that. And I wasn't about to put the massive breaker bar on and then snap off one of these guys. Now you can see these are rusted all the way through. So I got these out very slowly, working them back and forth, and um, they both came out fine. So I was very happy with that. Then when I got to the front ones, the front ones actually are quite close to the gas tank. You can see that the way this works is it's much closer. It's, the tank is right next to it actually, not several inches away like it was in the front. I was uncomfortable with using the torch but once again, they would not come off simply with the wrench, and I did not want to put the breaker bar on. So, I tried something for the first time, a heat gun. I tried the heat gun. It's got two settings, low and high. I, I, I was shocked at the difference that the heat gun made. Um, I may not have, I can't remember if I had to go to the higher setting. I might. I definitely tried the lower one first, before the fast, higher one. And... Um, can't remember if I just only needed the lower one, but what, what I noticed was these guys are real easy to take out. And when you, they come out and you look at it, you can see why. 
these guys hadn't rusted at all. Now, this, this is the first time this tank has ever come out, so for whatever reason, the environment in which these bolts were was not conducive to rusting them up like it was in the back. So these guys came out no problem, okay? Now, one thing I want to point out is these threads happen to be uh, 10 millimeter, 1.25, and uh, I have a, a die, this hexagon die, that I have used now to clean off these threads. The reason is because these rusted threads, um, even though I got, I got it out fine, but when I go to put this back in again, they could get caught up and crossed thread and stripped out and uh, I could make a big problem for myself underneath putting this back in. Because you can be sure that where these were all rusted, the threads on the other side where they're going into are gonna be rusted too. Now I also have a tap, and um, I haven't done it yet, but I should tap these also just to clean these out. Now on this side, I probably won't need to do that because I could just run this die over that. And not gonna be a problem. Okay, so fortunately I should have no problem there now. The straps themselves, I thought I might have to replace these because uh, I thought they might even break just getting them off. And of course, they are heavily rusted, but um, they're still substantial. My current plan is to reuse these and to um, paint them with the Rust-Oleum primer so to keep them from rusting any further. Uh, they seem fine to me. Uh, plus, of course, I, I don't have replacement straps right now, and I do want to keep the job moving. And um, I think they're going to be fine. Okay, um, now to move on to the, another point of uh, issue. And that is getting off this flare coupling on the fuel pump now. Flare nuts on fuel system very often can be a big problem. I had a problem in my 93 Civic, couldn't get it off. One problem that you run into is you're using the flare nut on the flare wrench rather. Okay, now you, you have to you end up in a situation sometimes where you're applying so much torque that literally the jaws on this actually start opening up enough to get over and it starts to round off the nut. Now once that happens, uh, you have to stop because that's not gonna work. It's not, uh, you're just gonna round it off worse and worse and worse and worse. And, uh, now here's a trick that I, I actually read about online and I used it in this case. And the idea is to use vice grips. After you put the uh, flare, flare wrench on, you actually use vice grips to clamp down on the, um, the two jaws. And you can really crank a good set of vice grips. And that actually will keep these from spreading. And that will allow you to apply more t torque on this. Now, in this setup, it was a three quarter. I used a three quarter on the um, the other th component here, which you, you can't see because it's not here. Okay, and that's of course three quarters a much bigger wrench. I didn't have any problem with that. But with um, with this flare 14 millimeter flare wrench. Even with the vice grips on now, I could apply more force without rounding it off, but I could not apply enough force to, without breaking the bond. So I used this other trick that I had also seen online. Um, and that was the idea of linking on the, um, the uh, a, a second um, spanner wrench. And of course, I can't do this all with one hand, but you get you might have seen this before. You'll get the idea. Um, it, it, rather than putting a cheater pipe over this, which sometimes uh, is not easy, you might not have one that's going to fit over that very well. Uh, it turns out that this locks into those that spot really very effectively. Uh, I should mention that in doing this, I did try. I also ended up using the heat gun on this, and I had to go to the high setting uh, in addition to everything else that I did. Uh, 
course, I'm crazy about it because, of course, there's fuel in there. But it was the heat gun. There was no open flame. And in a sense, I was a little bit desperate. I was to the point where I was going to thought I might break it. I was lucky it didn't break. Uh, you can kind of see that it was rusted on the outside. But the threads, you know, in where it was actually contained were not a problem. Why this was t so tight, I, c I couldn't say exactly. I did try getting the brush a little wire brush and cleaning this up, obviously using a ton of penetrating fluid um, to try to do this. I, I, I used penetrating fluid, I tried the wax to get in there, and can't say that any one of them was any better than the other one because the idea with this is you just keep trying and trying and trying until finally either you break it and then you get a new component or it finally comes off. This one came off, so that was a W on that one. Okay, next. Um, didn't have any trouble. Uh, oh, yeah, I had to take off of this. Uh, th this is part of the EVAP system, these two ports. And of course, these were all rusted. I, I snapped one of those, not a big deal, uh, because of course I'm not reusing those. I uh, snapped all four of these because, honestly, uh, these were rusted. This particular spot on this tank was rusted the worst. Uh, for some reason, it rusts more in, the, in, the, in this section. I used, I, all I could do on these guys, I, uh, because you could see it had a Phillips head on it, which was, I had no way I was going to get these off with a Phillips, so I had to use vice grips. And they, fortunately, I was able to grip enough of them just to snap it off without too much trouble. And that allowed me to get the, uh, get them off. Now, once I got them back on here, what I've done here, you can see I put the rusty metal primer on it. Because uh, this is the EVAP uh, line. It, of course, had some significant rust on it but it was still intact and it, relatively, it's not the smallest diameter line. It uh, still seemed to be pretty good. So what I did was I cleaned it off with some solvent, uh, dried it out, applied the rusty metal primer all over it. I do not, in a case like this, go after it with a wire brush or anything like that because um, there's no point trying to make this thing leak, okay? Um, and I only use the uh, paintbrush. Um, when I cleaned it off with solvent, I brushed it. I, I brushed it all clean and got it all dry. Then I let, then I put the rusty primer on it. This I think is going to be fine because because this is just as you can imagine. There's really no pressure on this line. It just sits here, and it's only it's only a vapor line. Um, even if this had a even if it had a crack in it, I, if I had sealed that, like I had, like I had sealed this thing at a point, and that was you know actually leaking. Um, and, and use a sealant. It's possible even to seal this type of thing. But this was this was actually fine. This is going to go in no problem. Um, so I, I think that's it. that's the whole thing here. Now I, today I'm going to put this back under the car and get it back in place and uh, start reinstallation. Re okay. Then Black Beauty's going to ride again.